So the thing I love since starting this vlog, I get to meet new people and um, people that I've known for years. I get a chance to learn new things about them. My friend that I spoke with on yesterday, he was one of the, the first people I spoke to about thinking about starting a vlog and he was supportive. He's always so supportive and I told him like, I'm gonna have to interview you, you know that, right? And that's exactly what I did on yesterday. And it couldn't have come at a better time with this being Easter weekend. His schedule finally cleared a little bit and mine finally cleared a little bit after working all day for um, both of us. We got a chance to sit down on yesterday evening and chat it up. If I ever took a loss, I learned a lesson. I won't ever think I'm better than the next man. I've been down before to come up by stress. Honestly, Keith, when I met you, uh -oh. I knew, no, 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 no. <laughs> I knew something was different about you, but in a good way. And it took me asking to figure out what was different about you which in my opinion was good. Talk about what you do outside of your professional career. I've been called into ministry. So- I, How old were you? It was 2010. <laughs> so what, seven years ago? So I was 28. Okay. I called it 28. Were you immediately like, yep, gotta do what I was called or? To be honest, I was probably called back in high school. You know, like every, every typical child getting ready to enter the college. Who wants to preach? You know what I'm saying? I'm getting ready to go to college. I'm, I'm going to turn up. I wasn't thinking about preaching, you know, but there was a couple of things that happened while I was in school. Things um, like what? Well, the biggest thing was I was diagnosed with cancer my final year at UAH. Uh, yeah, I went to UAH. And, uh, I I'll was, forgive you for that, but continue. Hey, right, go Chargers. Right. But even after the cancer, even after God healed me, uh, I was still in the clothes. Do you think? The cancer slowed you down to kind of bring you back to like, okay, let me reassess the situation and reassess what I'm doing with my life. At first. Yes and no. Okay. Um, because even with all the partying, all the different extracurricular activities I was doing, I was always at church on Sunday. So I never lost my love for God. Talk about your, your position here at the church. So I am the youth minister here at Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church uh, under the leadership of Dr. Owendo Davis. Um, and I am over from an infant all the way up to 30s. Um, so it's, it's a big responsibility. How difficult is it to balance everything? Because, you know, we talk like you get up early, you work out, you go to work professional then you come to church how difficult is that to juggle because <laughs> i you know i know how difficult it is for me i don't have a life you don't have a life <laughs> it affects me because a lot of times my friends be like oh yo keys we, we doing this come out here and it's like no i can't i can't do it this weekend <laughs> one reason um i kind of gravitated towards you too um for those who don't know my dad's a minister but my my brother my oldest brother's a minister and he's a young minister okay. and I know the things that he goes through. I know the struggles that he goes through with trying to, you know, be a youth minister because you're young. <laughs> like, and things haven't stopped approaching you guys. You, you, and you're scrutinized more. And it, yeah, like, you're you mean, definitely more in the, the public eye yeah. and people are judging. Yeah. How do you deal with it? You know, honestly, it, it, it used to be a struggle. I had to get alone. I had to separate myself from people. Um, it wasn't that they did anything wrong. It was me. I had to get right with myself. That I was like, you know what? I love God, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't make no apologies for that. You know, I don't make any apologies for who God has called me to be. For well, the person who hasn't been in church, ever been in church, or has been in and out of church, um, what is so important about coming to church, being amongst the congregation? Well, one, the Bible tells us that you need to fellowship with other believers. This is the problem, though. I think a lot of people, especially in our generation and younger, they focus on the hypocrites in church. And that becomes the problem. But what I will tell anybody, and you know, is we are all sinners saved by grace. Everybody in the church is a sinner. I'm not going to church. Nobody at church is any good. They're doing the same thing I'm doing. What would you tell a person? I would tell a person, let's come. 
iron sharpens iron. I may know something in the Bible that can help you. You may know something in the Bible that can help me. What is the biggest thing you deal with? And this is speaking from just a young man, like, what eats at your flesh? I would say the biggest struggle that I have is, um, <laughs> um the relationship piece and just all that comes with relationships. Um, being a minister uh, is very lonely. It's a very lonely place because people don't really understand what God has called you to do. Like I, I've been studying this week, of course we're leading up to Easter, so I've really been studying what happened to Jesus, his life the week leading up to his earthly death and the resurrection. And one thing that God just kept putting in my spirit is watch how Jesus did ministry for those three and a half years of ministry in his life. He literally ministered all the time. I can't give up because I have to remember what ministry is all about. And it's about serving God's people and it's about spreading his word. And that's what we all here, whether we choose to do it or not, that's really what we're all here to do. We're all here to spread the good news, the, the message of Jesus Christ. And if I had a baby or two out of wedlock, am I welcome in the church? Come to church, yes, definitely. If I've been in prison, so drugs. Come to church, yes. Why, why, why not? <laughs> what do you have to lose? We all sinners. I lie, I've stole, I've done all, and I'm in the church. It's the same sin. There's no big sin and little sin. What would you say with someone who's dealing with a chronic disease who may have been in church, may not have been in, been in church, and feel like God has given up on them? Something bad happens to all of us. In the book of James, <clears throat> it tells us that life is full of trials and tribulations. What we have to understand is that this is not our eternal home. Prayer is communication with God. So we don't take that for granted. We pray to God, we read our Bible, then the Holy Spirit can convict us. Prayer is so powerful. It is. And I've, I've grown, especially within the last year, um, with my prayer life, and I got a lot, a lot more to do. But, um, you know, I pray and then I do my part. Right. And I feel like I'm here, he meets me here. Right. Favorite Bible verse? <laughs> um, Favorite Bible verse in regards to patience? Love is patient. That's my favorite too. <laughs> Love is patient. I so, did a, a high school, no, yeah, I was in high school, but it was a church or a talker contest. Um, first time I ever got in front of people and spoke, okay. it was on love. Love okay. is patient, love yes, is kind, love yes, is true. Yes. It's my favorite. So if we and if we look at just those verses right there, a lot of times we use it for weddings, but really it's just about love. Period. That's how we should love. Love everyone. everyone. Yay. For me, every day that I live, I live for Christ every day.